Hi guys, welcome to the kitchen. So we're going to do a super quick swipe, you guys, and we're going to call it pouring on peanuts tonight. Peanuts, very minimal cost factor. So the question comes up quite frequently from a lot of people about what brand of paints that I use and I don't use anything expensive. I use basic Amsterdam, um, Liquitex basic, just entry level paints. And I do experiment and I do pick up paints from all sorts of different places. So this is my base paint guys. So base paint is a 50-50 mix of beauty tone white satin enamel and Bellspar contractors grade house paint and just a little bit of water because it was quite it was quite thick but my paints tonight are super super cheap and you know what they don't even have a name they're just called acrylic paint from crafters for crafters they look like this I got them in the dollar store and they are a buck fifty a bottle I believe yep buck fifty so I've tried them out a couple times today. Look at that, $1.50. And you know what? For little tile pieces like this, they work really, really well. So there is absolutely no need to invest in golden or all of these expensive paints. It's not necessary. You know, once you put your initial layout out for your pouring medium mix, I don't think the expensive paints on small tiles like this, I don't think it makes a really big difference. And when we're just learning, it's good to start small. Okay, so this is my black white mix. Yes, I'm putting it on the bottom because these colors are all quite soft and I want a little bit of drama. A little bit of drama. And my tiles, same thing. My tiles are from the Habitat for Humanity store. And if you have one in your area that sells construction stuff, go and check them out because these tiles, I paid like 39 cents for them, and the small 4x4 four four ones are a dime. Like, you can't, you just can't get any cheaper than that. Okay, that was Leaf Green by the same company. And this is Cashmere Tan by the same Dollar Store Craft Paints. This one is um, kind of a terracotta color and it was a dry pigment. I again sourced out, I bought a whole bunch of dry pigments from a lady on Barrage sale for like five bucks. So I was super happy with this, with that. This one is called Warm White. It's kind of a buff color. And what else? Let's put a little more of the green on the top. This one is lime green, also the inexpensive craft paint. And same with swiping tools, guys. Um, I don't have any success swiping with palette knives, as you all know, so I either swipe with bits of playing cards or this, which is a file folder, plastic file folder. They come in a pack of five, again, at the dollar store. They're, they're like super cheap. You can cut them in strips. And the best thing about them is that they are washable. Although I don't wash mine, I just wipe them off. And the reason is because I can't see them when they're clean. So I just, I cannot see them. So I'm gonna swipe in white, even though I just dipped that in black. And we're gonna go from there. Okay. Do I wanna swipe this in white? Sure, let's do it. It's pretty easy to, you know, to paint without spending the mother load, especially when you're learning. You know, I get it. I, I've wasted buckets and buckets and buckets of paint. Trust me. You know, and, and then I think that's really when I started painting on the tiles, the small tiles especially, because I was still able to be creative and learn. Uh, swiping in black now, guys. Still able to be creative and learn and... You know what? I didn't have to sell the house to do it. So, yeah, you have to kind of look outside the box and source out. 
It's all doable, my friends. And the rest is just practice. Practice, practice. You know, you guys only ever see the videos and the pours. Well, not always the ones I like because I do do lots of pour overs that I don't like. But in general, you know, I do lots of paintings that wind up right here on the tin foil, and they get scraped up and made into my base coat for the next pour. We're going to take some of this out right here. And then we're just going to move some paint. We're going to give it a quick torch. So I have to say, I was pretty happy with these dollar store paints. For inexpensive craft paints, I think that they are just as effective. Um, yeah, you know what? For a buck fifty for a bottle of them, we can't really not afford to play and experiment. And yeah, it gives you a really good opportunity to just maybe try some things you wouldn't try. Like, you know, paints are expensive. As we know, so I think we're just going to soften this black a little bit with a piece of paper. So this is a little piece of playing card. Um, some playing cards don't work well and I tear mine on the edges if you cut them and you have a crispy clean cut you get a crispy clean line if you tatter them up a bit and tear them you get a a line that I'll show you like that so it gives you the opportunity to create some shapes oh I just wiped paint on my nose some shapes on your pieces so I think that's quite pretty so if you were looking for a focal point or a center point, I would try to keep that in my pour and work around it. Easy peasy, guys. So, you know, I don't think that I would use these paints if I was doing a huge pour because I know that there's not a lot of pigments in them. But for small things like this, they're quite sufficient. They really are. But we'll keep, we'll keep bending this and we'll keep moving our paint around and you guys can be the judge. Judge and the jury. My, my fate is in your hands, guys. Okay, I don't want to lose that. I want to keep that. I think we're just going to drizzle a little more paint on the edges. So I want to try to keep the composition relatively same as it is. I'm going to spread that out a bit more, but I want to keep this wispy bit. I don't want that. Okay, so let's go this way first. Almost, but not quite. I didn't want to lose it. And that's it. You know, the rest is just moving the paint around and getting a composition that you're happy with. And yeah, just keep, keep fiddling with it. You can always stop and add to it. If you're not feeling it, take some of the paint away or swipe it again. Go, 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 stop. <laughs> That's it, guys. We're just, same thing, back and forth and stretch it out. OK, 
Okay, I think we're gonna stop right here. We're gonna pop a couple bubbles. And I'm gonna bring you over and show you just how easy that was and how inexpensive it can be to learn and to practice. And you know what, I get it. I'm not made of money either. Like, you know, life is very expensive. So if you can carry on and be creative and not break the bank, those are good things. Good, good things, my friends. You know what? I think I'm just going to leave that right like it is. And I'm going to bring you guys over for a flyby. There it is. Yeah, that's pretty fun. So here's our little wispy, this black. Oh, focus, focus. Camera doesn't want to focus tonight. Hmm. It doesn't, doesn't want to focus. All right, well, we're going to do this without without focal point. So this is the wispy edges that I got from tearing the paper and just leaving them jagged. So there's our cells. This is, remember, all inexpensive craft paint. And there it is in its entirety. So that was pretty simple, guys. Pretty simple. So I'm going to love you and leave you here. I'll post this up. You know what? Try the paints. I bought two things yesterday. I wasn't going to spend a whole bunch. I bought two things yesterday, tried them out. They worked fine. I went back and bought four or five more today. All right, my friends, poor happy, stay safe. It's only paint, guys. You all got this. Bye for now.